Oh, oh, is this real? Is this real? I, I woke up early this morning and I, I had a dream. I made a video and I mentioned U.S. Steel in it. And then the stock went down like 20% the next day. Is any of that real? Is that really happening? Yeah. I know someone's out there saying, Hey, he made a video and then the stock went down the next day. <laughs> Hang on a second. I'm still in my pajamas. Want to see my Yankee, my Yankee PJs? I don't know if you know this or not, but I wrote a book. It's called Infinitesimally Small Balls. It's the story of one trader lost his mind and his balls and managed to get them back in the nick of time. But on page 17, I think it's chapter 2. What page? Page 17 in chapter 2. <clears throat> if starting a position, it is beneficial to know when this company is reporting earnings. If you're buying a stock for the first time, moments before they're reporting earnings, you are an asshole. Not only are you an asshole, you are a psychopathic gambling asshole. All right. <laughs> if you didn't know that about me, if you just started a position in U.S. Steel after, I don't know, how, how long have we been talking about buying U.S. Steel? I don't know, for a year, year and a half. And let me tell you the story about U.S. Steel. If you happen to be in the room... It's a tragic story of when not to sell and when not to buy something. Uh, we were bashing the shorts when this thing broke twenty-seven fifty, and yeah, it got the forty-two fifty. And once again, we were thinking fifty bucks on U.S. Steel, and we sold some as it started going down after the Trump speech. Because if you didn't listen to the Trump speech, now again, maybe you don't know this about me. Also, I'm a conspiracy theorist. Everything out there is not only are they out to get me. By the way, they are out to get me. I know that, so I'm not paranoid. So I, it's true. It's true. So, after the Trump speech, remember, on, on March 1st, where everybody was rah, 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 Trump, because he wasn't such a dick during that speech, and we rallied 350 points. Remember when he mentioned, we got to put U.S. Steel, or something, something, U.S. Steel, and then he qualified the statement, and he said, not U.S. Steel, I meant Steel from America. The trade was over right there. That was his nudge, that was his nudge, hey, maybe you want to get out of the U.S. Steel, because I just said, U.S. Steel, not U.S. Steel. That's like walking up to a couple of hot chicks, and you start talking to, you know, the, the, the crowd, and then one starts to really pay attention, and you're like, no, no, not you, you over here. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, if you don't think the Dow is going to 40,000 in the next seven years, that's the only thing you need to have a grudge with me right now. I still believe it, even though maybe the market will go down today. <laughs> but seriously, if you started a position yesterday and you didn't know US Steel was coming out with earnings, and then you're wondering why it's down five points today, <laughs> don't be in the industry. Don't trade. Shut your account right now and say goodnight. Because earnings season is meant to trade the stocks after the reports. The only stock that I ever bought in the last two years before an earnings report was Restoration Hardware. And I wasn't even buying the stock. I was playing both sides. 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 You see, I had no idea what Restoration Hardware was going to do. But I had this sneaky suspicion that it was either going to pop 15 or 20% because the stock was all coiled up, ready to short squeeze some kids, or maybe it was going to roll over and die. So what I did was I bought the calls and the puts just looking for a big move. And we got it, and we made money on that position. Member. Member. If you're going to try to pick directions, why not just bet against the Yankees? If you're just going to try to gamble on earnings, guess what? You do realize maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't realize that the options market is difficult <laughs> alone. But if you're trying to gamble on options before an earnings report, you do realize you're paying the most you could possibly pay for the options contract is the day before the earnings come out. So you need a move three times as big as you normally would get 
let alone guessing, guessing where it's going to go. So not only are you going to be right on your guess, because you don't know dick. You don't know dick. Yeah, you're crunching some numbers. Well, the, all the, all the EBITDA last quarter, and because I read on the internet that they secured some contracts, should qualify, go to the bottom line. So the EBITDA might spike about 3%, which could translate into an earnings per share beat by 3 cents, which then could translate into a 13 or 14% stock rise. So let's buy the calls here, Muffy. Even then, how many times do you see an earnings beat Boom! The the the, nerd, the news comes out, and you're fucking jerking it. Oh my god, it's an earnings beat! And then the revenues come in, and then all this other great news, and then the CEO comes in and says, Yeah, but you know what? 2018 ain't looking so hot. And then the stock fucking bubbles! Plummets! Then, you got the better one. You got a stock that's gone from $22 a share to 50 bucks, right? And the earnings come out, and they're super spectacular. Best quarter ever in the history of this company. They've never seen money pouring in like this before. Earnings per share, boom. Revenues, badoof. Guidance, ridiculous guidance. Stock goes down 4% that day. Why? Why? But why? You know why? Because some guy with 13 million shares who bought it at 22 decided to sell on the news that morning. And that's why the stock's down. And that's why you don't gamble on earnings reports. You trade them after the fact. So when that $50 stock gaps down to $46.50 on that good news and then starts to go up during the day and the shorts start to get and they starts to rally, then you buy it. Oh, then if it just goes back to where it came from, it's a good trade. And then you're saying, wow, I had a great trade on this stock and it's still down for the day because you bought it when it was down two and then it went up a dollar and it ended the day flat. And meanwhile, you bought it while it was down. And then the guy that owned it from yesterday is pretty, pretty, still pretty pissed off, but you're thinking this was a great stock. Trading. Trading. That's how it happens. There's those things.